So the next thing we do with partial fractions is where we want to deal with what we call improper fractions. Now, improper fractions are going to take on a slightly different meaning of improper fractions that you will have done in like primary school and GCSE, because we're now going to be thinking about them as like algebraically improper. So in pure year one, you will have learned that the degree of a polynomial is the highest power that it has. So we would say that a quadratic is degree two. You could say that a cubic is degree three. A quintic is degree five. So the definition of what makes an algebraic fraction being improper is if the degree of the numerator is at least the degree of the denominator. So for this particular one that we've got here, the degree of the numerator is two and the denominator is one. So it's improper because the bit on the top is more than the bit on the, on the, uh, the denominator. This one, the degree is three and the degree is two, so it is improper. And this one I put in here as an example because the degree of the one on the top is one and the degree of the one on the bottom is also one, but this is still going to be, um, it shouldn't really say a partial fraction, it should just say that a fraction is still improper if the degree is the same for the top and the bottom. And we'll see why that might be the case, okay? We'll see what, why um, we will call some of those ones improper and why the other ones we can't. And it's to do with algebraic division that we have here. So careful, if you do have the numerator and the denominator with the same degree, we would still call that an improper fraction with algebraic stuff. So I've said that questions might take one or two forms. The first form it might be is to do the division to express it as a quotient and a remainder. Literally just do some algebraic division and see what happens to it. And then the second kind of thing where we might use these skills is to express something as partial fractions. So we're going to focus to begin with on just doing a bit of practice around some algebraic division where there will be a remainder. Because I think usually the way we've done algebraic division, there hasn't frequently been a remainder. And then we're going to split the second half of the lesson into expressing as partial fractions. And you'll notice that this one that I've got here, this is also an improper fraction because the degree of the numerator is two and the degree of the denominator is two. So it is still an improper, an improper fraction and will require this, uh, this type of skill that we're going to use, okay? So um, this is kind of basic here. But I've said, for example, you know that 7 divided by 3 is 2 remainder 1. So we would usually write that as 7 over 3 is the same as 2 plus its remainder divided by the divisor. That's how we normally say what remainders are. If you think about doing something like, I don't know, uh, 75 divided by 7, you would say 7 goes into 1 once, doesn't go into 5, and there is a remainder of 5. So the answer would be the bit that you have on top plus the remainder divided by the divisor. Okay, that's, it's useful just looking at that with numbers for a second because we're about to do it with algebra and it just reminds us of where the different things should go when we do the division. So in general, what we'll have, if you do a function and you divide it by what we call a divisor, the first thing that you get, like the, the whole bit that comes out is called the quotient and you will then at the end have the bit that's remaining divided by the divisor. I wouldn't necessarily think about memorizing what this is. It's just interesting seeing a couple of new words like quotient and divisor. But the way I think of it is, do I know how it works with numbers? Great, then I know how it's going to work with algebra as well. So in this particular one that I've got here, I have x squared plus 5x minus 9 over x plus 2. That can be rewritten as ax plus b plus c over x plus 2. And a, b, and c here are going to be constants. Now, there's a couple of things I wanted to point out. First of all, this will not be a partial fractions question. Why will this not become a partial fractions question? Because it's just over x plus 2. And for it to be a partial fractions question, the denominator will be a product of two linear factors. This is just an x plus 2 here. So we, don't, we know this isn't going to be anything to do with uh, partial fractions. The second thing here is the quotient, the bit that you would get at the top of the division, is a mixture. We've got some bit of x and we've got a constant as well. Why do you think that we've got some bit of x and a constant as well, rather than just a constant in this particular 
division that I've got here. There will be a, rem a remainder from it as well, but I'm, I'm really trying to say, why is it AX plus B rather than just an A? Yeah, so the top has a degree of 2, and the bottom has a degree of 1. So when you do 2 take away 1 to find out what the difference between the degrees is, the degree is 1, and this is actually an expression of degree 1, because this is an x to the power of 1. The reason I'm saying that is because if the top part, I'm just going to change it very quickly, if it was x cubed plus 5x minus 9, over x plus 2. What do we think that we would be saying for this whole expression on the right-hand side here? What would be different? There would be an ax squared plus bx plus c plus d over x plus 2. So whatever the difference is between the degrees is going to give you a clue to what, the, what it should be looking like. And that's going to apply for all of us. But in further maths, there will be questions where there will be quite a big difference between these things. And you're going to have to start thinking about what it will look like. They may not provide it to you. And you'll have to work that out yourself. OK? So let's actually just do this division that we've got here. So I'm actually going to start off by doing this division. So I'm going to do x squared plus 5x minus 9 divided by x plus 2. And I didn't used to do it like this when I was at school. So if I make a mistake, can you just be looking out for it? Because my year 13s last year knew how terrible I was at this. So it's about you making sure I don't make any mistakes. This is my worst bit of maths. I hate doing this. So um, I have to think about what I multiply to get the x squared. And so I'd have to multiply x just by an x, right? And then I'll multiply this expression by x. So I have an x squared plus 2x. And then I'll subtract these to see what I have. So I'm going to have a 3x here. And I'm also going to pull down that minus 9 too, right? Then the other thing I will do is I will say, well, what do I do to x plus 2 to try and get the 3x? Well, I multiply it by a 3. And then I'm going to do 3 multiplied by this. So that's 3x plus 6. And then for that last stage, what would be when I subtract them? Minus 15, because minus 9 minus 6 is minus 15, OK? So if you just go back to what we were saying at the top here, or what we were saying at this part here, this means that x squared plus 5x minus 9 over x plus 2 is the thing that it divided to, which we called the, uh, the quotient. This is the quotient at the top plus the remainder, which is minus 15, divided by the divisor. Kind of thinking about it with those numbers that we had. And the divisor was x plus 2. So this ends up with telling us that a is 1, b is 3, and c is minus 15. So it's really just going back to doing some practice with polynomial division. And I am... Um, The reason that this is useful is because trying to integrate this expression is going to be really, really difficult. But you know how to integrate this. You know how to integrate this. And by the end of year 13, you will know how, know how to integrate this. So the reason this is being brought in now is it's an algebraic technique that will just allow you to kind of break things down that look quite complex into smaller individual pieces because the math that you apply to those smaller individual pieces will nearly always be a lot more simple to do. Okay, So that's why um, we use this as a technique in maths. OK, so I want you guys to have a go at this one here with some algebraic division. Um, but before you actually have a go at doing this one, I just wanted to have a look at the question together. So this fraction that I've got here, the degree of the top is 4 and the degree of the bottom is 2. And so the difference in the degrees is 2, which is why here you've got this uh, a degree 2 quadratic. And it has to be the general version of the quadratic. Just if I was to change it so that the degree on the top was a 5, if this was a 5, I would have to have an ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d for this first bit that I've got here. Okay, 
and you'll notice that the remainder this time is a linear factor. And the reason we have that is because if you have an x squared minus 4 here, we want the most general bit to be on the top. OK, so just let's see how this goes. Um, a tip to use the plus 0x if you have a gap in here when you're doing the division. So if you guys want to have a go at that, I am going to start doing this one on the board at the same time and hoping I don't make any mistakes. So I'm going to write it with the extra 0x. So I've added in the plus 0x just to make the placeholder there. It's a bit easier if you have that plus 0x in when you're doing any of the multiplying. That's OK. When you have finished that, we're going to do questions one to four from exercise one F, okay? 